All right, so according to the Nyquist sampling theorem, which allows us to, or at least would allow us to calculate the signal on our lock and amplifier, um, according to that theorem, what we need to do is calculate the Fourier transform of the average sampled surface temperature. Um, okay, so what I wanna do is walk you through two slides that sort of sketch how we'll, how we'll do this, and then there'll be a couple of loose ends that we'll have to fix up. Um, so in general, like if I'm not thinking about the Fourier transform, just the average sampled surface temperature as a function of time is a continuous thing. And um, that would basically just be a proper weighting, like an area weighted average of the surface temperature itself, not the sense surface temperature, but just the surface temperature itself, um, multiplied by the, um, you know, the, the intent, the local intensity of the sensing beam as a function of position. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to say that the average sample temperature is just a spatial average of the temperature that's weighted by the local intensity of the laser beam. Um, and then what I needed was the Fourier transform in time of that thing. So I'll just take the Fourier transform in time. Um, if I'm looking at this left expression here, the only thing in it that's a function of time is the surface temperature itself, theta. Um, and so since, in, since integrals themselves can be done in any order, if I try to take the Fourier transform of this, I can just literally replace the function of time here with a function of f. Um, so this is the Fourier transform in time of the surface temperature. Um, it still maintains its spatial positioning at this point, um, but, it's, uh, but it's in, Fourier, in the Fourier domain. Okay, so that is the expression that I need for the Nyquist theorem. The only problem is, of course, I haven't actually calculated what the Fourier transform in time of the surface temperature is, especially with respect to space. Um, and so now we need to do that. Okay, how would I do that? Hmm, that looks hard, right? Um, well, let's just think about it physically for a second. What, what is this thing? Um, I'm going to claim that the surface temperature, the actual surface temperature as a function of position and its Fourier transform, is just a convolution of essentially whatever the pump beam is doing. Um, a convolution of that with what I'll call the point response function. So like in words, the real space surface temperature is just a convolution of the intensity of the pump beam and the temperature point response function. So the point response function is basically like, what temperature would it be if I dumped energy into just this point, right? Well, that's great. So that's what G of R would represent, but I'm not going to just dump it into that point. I'm going to dump it into a whole bunch of points, right? I'm going to spread out um, where I'm dumping the heat into, or pump beam is spread out in space. Um, so what I really need to do is the convolution of the pump beam with what I'll call a point response function. And uh, to make things a little bit more complicated, I really need to do that in Fourier, the Fourier space with time. Um, but the Fourier space with time thing is actually kind of easy to think about, um, especially the point response function. What I'm really looking for is the point response function if I were to excite something using a sinusoidal input. So like if the heating profile was e to the i, you know, omega t, what would the temperature response be? It'll turn out that that's actually pretty easy to calculate or relatively easy to calculate. And so don't worry about the fact that this is in, frequency, in Fourier space with respect to um, time, so the frequency domain right now. Um, just focus on the fact that it's a spatial convolution. Spatial convolutions in cylindrical coordinates, like that should like beg you, if you, if you know what a Hankel transform is, um, that, that is just begging you to convert to Hankel space. Um, I'll leave a, um, a short separate primer on what a Hankel transform is to explain that. Um, but, uh, you know, basically it turns out that writing convolutions is actually really hard to do in cylindrical coordinates, but it's really easy to do with Hankel transforms. Um, so Hankel transforms are basically just the 2D equivalent of Fourier transforms, but it turns out that the Hankel transform in this situation is super duper easy. Um, instead of writing the spatial um, convolution, what I'll do is I'll write the Hankel transforms just multiplied by each other. 
Um, and then I'll take the inverse Hankel transform to get that back into real space. Um, so that's all explained in the Hankel transform primer. Um, but so it turns out that it's actually quite easy to write this thing, the convolution of that thing. So um, that was basically the missing piece, right? So I was trying to calculate the Fourier transform of the s average surface temperature that we're sampling. And the missing piece there was that I needed to know the surface, I needed to know the, the before doing the averaging, what the temperature profile was. Um, and now I know how to do that using Hankel transforms. The only loose end here is that um, I haven't actually gone through the mechanism of how I'm calculating what the Hankel transform of the pump, you know, this, the intensity of the pump beam is, or the Hankel transform of this uh, point response function. But I promise I'm going to do that in due time. And it turns out that it's not terribly hard. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this before I before I actually calculate these two things. I'm just going to calculate. I'm going to take this expression and plug it into um, the missing piece up here and simplify it a little bit more before I go and do that. Okay, so I'm going to take this Hankel transform, like the inverse Hankel transform of the convolution, blah blah blah. I'm going to take that, plug it into our expression for T average or the Fourier transform of T average. Um, if you do that, of course, there's one integral over here and a separate integral over here. Um, so the T average integral was an integral over space, so that's R. The integral that was sitting in the average or in the surface temperature involved um, the Hankel transform variable K. Um, so if I go ahead and do that plugging in. Um, I will get the following expression. All I've done in the, these two lines is plug it in. But what I can do is I can rearrange. So you see these, there's these two integrals, one with respect to k and one with respect to r. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, because it doesn't really matter which order I do those integrals in, I'm just going to switch the order of them. I'm going to do the r integral first and the k integral second. Um, so I'm just rearranging the order in which I do some of these things. And if I rearrange that order, what I'll see is that I can gather some of these terms in a way that actually forms another Hankel transform. Um, so I've got 2 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of this, this what was this? This was the um, spatial profile of the sensing or the probe beam um, multiplied by the Bessel function times an integral over r. Well, guess what? This is the definition of the Hankel transform of, well, whatever this function was, which was our, our uh, probe beam profile. So that's the Hankel transform of S. And so I can simplify this whole thing and make it look like, so the thing that's inside the integral that's left over is basically an integral over the Hankel transform of our pump beam, the Hankel transform of the um, point response function, and the Hankel transform of our probe beam. So um, what I'll go do now is uh, first I'll do the easy part. The easy part is calculating the Hankel transform of the probe beam and the pump beam. Um, they're both Gaussians, so it won't be a surprise that if one is easier to, easy to do, then so is the other. Um, and then we'll have to go figure out what this point response function is. Um, and there's a separate technique for doing that. So that's what's next on the agenda. So now I now have an expression, you know, for the average, the average sampled surface temperature, um, but I need to evaluate the three terms that sit inside the integral in order to be finished. And so that's what I'm going to do next.